inside the cathedral. It's all enclosed, it's very dark, it's very claustrophobic. At the top of Salisbury Cathedral, Sally, who's our resident female peregrine. Ever since we put a tracking device on her, we've been able to be part of her experience. These birds require such a big amount of space. The two females clash. Something's happened to her and we don't know what. We have the data. She's out there. What happened to Sally? Hello, I'm Chris Raleigh, the creative director of Rewild Life, a social enterprise company that combines technology and data with creativity and storytelling to raise awareness for endangered wildlife and boost engagement with the natural world. In this talk today, with the help of my colleagues Rob Nichols and visuals from Casper Hughes, both highly skilled data scientists, we will go some way to explain the impact that data and storytelling has had on our Where's Sally project and in the context of society in general. Also in keeping with the Salisbury 2020 themes of movement, technology and the cathedral. So I'll take this opportunity to say a little bit more about Rewild Life's modus operandi. As I said, we endeavour to use creativity and technology to have a positive impact on environmental issues and endangered wildlife. Where we think we can be of most use as a company is in the awareness gap. In between those that know so much about the pressing environmental issues, the conservation scientists and NGOs, and those that need to hear about the issues, the general public, change makers and politicians. The conservation world creates a lot of data via the biologging of animal movements and behaviours and knowledge amassed by the naturalists and scientists. But they need to find a way to communicate the issues that are so obvious to them but haven't filtered through to the general public. We saw that we could fill this gap using the data that in its first instance is used for conservation science. We can at the same time use the same data for awareness and even entertainment with a purpose. There is a saying used quite a lot in conservation industry that through awareness for an issue, you can get empathy for it. And once you've got empathy, you can get to change. And although this is true, it's not the full answer. Awareness on its own has been found to not be enough for real lasting change. So to have maximum impact, you need to mix in engagement and interaction between the subject matter and the audience to boost the behavior change effect. And to quote Sir David Ambra, no one, will no one will protect what they don't care about and no one will care about what they have never experienced. Therefore, as a company, we decided to create products, services and experiences that start conservation conversations. And who better to start those conversations than those affected most on the front line of environmental breakdown, the animals themselves. So yes, I'm talking, talking animals. Anthropomorphization, the longest word you'll probably hear all day. So throughout culture, there have been many talking animals from, the, from all the Disney films, like the Jungle Book, the familiars in his Dark Material series, and of course, Dr. Doolittle. And it could be said that one of the very first records of talking animals was in the book of Genesis, the serpent that tricked Eve to eat the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. And so it seems apt that here we are to find ourselves creating talking peregrine Sally, who once lived atop house of god salisbury cathedral and i can say sally's motivations are a lot more honorable so that brings us nicely to talk of our experimental project where's sally 
that, could, that Salisbury Cathedral has kindly let us trial on the website. In our experience, Sally's life is brought to life by analysing GPS tracking data, knowledge of animal behaviour and storytelling using chatbot technology, enabling the user to follow and chat with her throughout her life. With the permission and help of naturalist Ed Druitt, we've had the privilege to analyse the GPS tracking data of Sally to try and answer a few questions. Who is Sally? Why did she leave? And where is she now? You see, Sally was the resident peregrine falcon living on the tower for a couple of years until late last year when, not unlike the medieval bishop of Salisbury, who was harassed by soldiers and moved the cathedral from Old Sarum to its present site, Sally was likewise harassed by the current nesting couple and forced to move on to find a new territory. In 2017, a tracking device was put on her back by Springwatch. The device works in a similar way to how the maps on a smartphone knows your location. Because of that, we have been able to follow her movement away from the cathedral. But then late last year, the signal suddenly went dead. And this is the current mystery we are trying to solve. Where's Sally? We thought the best place to start would be to retrace her movement, to visualise it in an interactive map and webcam video content, and then to learn about her life and explore her motivations. Who better to explain it than Sally herself, or at least a digital virtual representation of her? So bringing close, people closer to talking to the animals than ever before. We do this using all available data of her movements and behaviours and recreate her personality as observed on the web cameras by those that studied her and knew her so well. All that data and information enables us to build a picture of her life and start filling out the elements of her story. Storytelling is a key component if you're trying to engage people and keep them coming back. And what we found is we don't need to make up the storylines, we just need to release them from the data, and let the animal tell their own story. Luckily, these animal stories play out like a Hollywood plotline of love, loss and survival. So all we have to do is fill in a few blanks and apply very small amount of poetic license in keeping with her personality. So we will help tell Sally's story and you will be able to interact with it, warts and all. Experience nature as never before, red in tooth and claw. So to tell Sally's story in this unique way, we're using all sorts of complicated but interesting data analytic techniques and concepts that Rob, our data scientist, will now go some way to explain. So over to you, Rob. Hello, my name is Robert Nichols and I'm a data scientist at Rewild um, and I want to talk a little bit about the world of data and a little bit about how we at Rewild have brought some of the data we have available to us to life uh, and the ways that data gets used in general in, uh, in the world. So data is something that's been given a lot of attention recently. Um, you hear things like um, data is the new oil. Um, if you Google that phrase, um, you'll find a lot of information using it. It's become a bit of a cliche. Um, but the point is um, there's, this been, there's been an absolutely enormous growth in the data industry, um, sometimes covered by the industry of data science. Uh, and statistics, and um, the and it's it's obviously something that has garnered a lot of interest. So, um, you know, what is data exactly, and is it different to things like information? Is it different to knowledge? And ultimately, data is um, data is information that has been recorded such that it can be analysed and 
The industry of data science um, has enabled an absolutely enormous number of possible technologies and has been used in all sorts of fields, um, hopefully generally for positive things, um, although it does regularly get negative press for some of the negative things that have happened as a result of the world of big data. Um, but there are plenty of positive things that data has done for the world. Um, it helps us direct our healthcare resources. For example, during the pandemic, I've been doing a bit of work um, tracing COVID um, infections, and that helps us determine where we should allocate the resources in our society such that we can best protect the most vulnerable people in it. Um, before, the, before, even before COVID came about, um, data science and machine learning, which we'll talk about in a little bit, um, has been used to help cure illnesses and bring about better medicines in general. Um, it's helped us improve public transport. Um, it's helped us bring about self-driving cars and a whole host of other applications has come from this world that um, data and data science has allowed us to explore. Um, and really, it's something that is worked on at a number of levels by a number of different people and many, many different institutions. Um, but there are huge motivations for why we should be paying attention to it. In 2016, so that's four years ago now, IBM said that 90% um, of all data ever created in history had been created in the last two years. So that was in 2016, and there's absolutely extraordinary quantities of data being produced every day by me and by you. Um, this conversation, this uh, recording is an example of data, um, and all the things associated with it are examples of data. And, you know, we talk about data and we talk about, like, for example, the metadata about this conversation, uh, about this recording or conversation. Um, you viewing this video will generate data. Um, you uh, using any time you use your phone or a computer that's connected to the internet, more likely than not, you're generating data. So there's an absolutely massive amount of it, and we should definitely be paying attention. Um, so data in particular at Rewild, um, well, we have been using the knowledge that has been produced by uh, scientists like Ed Druitt um, to add context to data because like I say data without knowledge or without context it's just disconnected pieces of information that aren't individually useful um, that aren't individually valuable but when we add the context of an expert like Ed who spent his life collecting data and turning it into useful information, when he helps us contextualize the information we have, it enables us to bring new life to data that couldn't really be analyzed by a person due to its sheer quantity. And this is where data becomes connected with this uh, oft used term, machine learning. Um, when people like Ed, with his um, breadth of experience, applies his knowledge to a set of data, we can use the patterns in that data and relate it to the knowledge that Ed has to train a machine to then look at a new set of data and hopefully apply that knowledge. Perhaps not as accurately as Ed would apply it if he was purposefully and himself looking at it manually, but at a much, much, much greater speed uh, and a much, much greater quantity. So that means that people like Ed's work becomes more and more valuable. And that's what machine learning is in some sense. It's effectively, it is the training of machines to look at, look at data and derive value from it. Um, so, um, in this particular case, we have, for example, GPS data of Sally the Peregrine Falcon, who uh, recent, up until recently lived on the roof of Salisbury Cathedral. And um, with the knowledge that Ed 
brings about. Um, we can take a data point that would not be necessarily very interesting and we can say that that's an example of you know building a nest or that's an example of hunting and um, then it becomes it, it, it ceases to be this um, you know uh, ream of, of, of numbers uh, and letters and becomes sort of a human readable story and um, all of that can be condensed into these amazing visualizations uh, with with which people can interact and that hopefully drives engagement so our mission at reworld is very much to make sure that we use data for the right reasons we drive the right kinds of engagement and um, ultimately we bring about interesting and entertaining and educational stories um, so um, so that's so that's the main um, so that's mainly what I'd like to talk to you about today. Um, if you have any, um, if you have any interest at all in data science and machine learning, then feel free to reach out to us. And um, please check out our data, our Rewild data science uh, investigation, and hopefully help us find Sally um, and join us on that journey of seeing where she goes.